okay so let's discuss about the conservation ethics so in the conservation ethics if you see then we will find that uh, there are five types of the perspective are given under this conservation ethics okay so let's discuss one by one first is the a contractarian perspective contractarian perspective contract you know very well that what does it mean its meaning is that agreement an agreement or contract okay so here we will discuss about the agreement right so agreement is for what if we think about the any kind of the contract or agreement is there then it is always for the production some kind of the production gain mutual benefits among them or between them two parties okay cooperation okay and promotion uh, of each other to support and create a good society so these are the main uh, reason behind the any kind of the contract or agreements uh, generally uh, are there okay but do animals can uh, uh, have the any kind of the agreements so actually animals don't know about all these things they are not literate so that's why animals can't make a contract right so we should make sure that wildlife is used wisely for human benefits or not so these kind of the contracts we have to make among the countries among the parties between the government and peoples and okay people and these kind of the contracts can be uh, useful okay so wildlife is used wisely for human beings uh, sorry human benefits okay it is the major concern it should be there next effective production by the coordination at global level as i told you that between the countries among the countries means at uh, an, at an international level it should be there okay so international agreements uh, should be there and there are lots of agreements if you see the uh, sites okay so it is also an uh, 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 it is also an agreement okay so there are lots of agreements or uh, rules or act are passed by the international organizations to save or to safeguard the wildlife and other animals okay next protection of the endangered wildlife species it is most important because the endangered species are uh, more susceptible to uh, be affected or uh, we have to uh, safeguard them on the priority basis so these type of contracts can be made to save them or uh, to save them or to conserve them next one is the uh, utilitarian perspective if we see the utilitarian perspective then what does it mean okay so an utilitarian uh, perspective okay so let's see consequences best outcome overall these are the actually utilitarian utilitarian means the final results consequences what is the overall outcome so this is called as utilitarian right so uh, we should ensure that welfare of animal by uh, positive and negative in both ways should be always there okay so let's see the primary values what should be the primary values uh, the pleasure and preference or desire satisf satisfaction we should always check that whether it is for the pleasure of the animals or or it is uh, bad for the animal so we should always check this thing all uh, also give the preference or desired satisfaction of those animals if they are feeling any kind of the pain or frustration or we are not able to uh, s s uh, give them the happiness so it is not the uh, values these are the actually disvalues okay so we should always describe 
these things in the terms of the values or in the terms of the this value and then we can uh, do approach accordingly next uh, let's take an example it will be helpful for the uh, understand the values and this values okay so i am taking an example of i am taking the two examples let's see uh, first one is that let's take uh, let's uh, uh, suppose the, uh, in an area the population of monkey is increased okay is increased and they are harming to the human okay because they are uh, uh, interfering uh, in or they are encroaching to the human uh, livelihoods or human inhabitants and uh, they are uh, breaking some things uh, materials and uh, means uh, overall we can say that they are harming to the human population so what should be our responsibility in that case we have to capture them most of the monkeys should be captured and uh, send to the uh, send them to the uh, wild area or forest so that they cannot come back and they can live there freely so we are not harming them we are not killing them we have a safe option so we are sending them to there okay so this is the one example but it doesn't mean that monkey should be uh, always capture we have to treat them as our uh, friends okay so if their normal number are there then we uh, it's our responsibility to save them to give the food and to uh, rear them properly but if they are harming us their number is increased and we are not able to uh, control them then go for the second approach okay so this is the uh, uh, this type of the values can be decided according to the uh, values or disvalues okay second example i am taking from the wild okay here i took the one example of the wild but they were uh, living in the human or living in or nearby the human uh, livelihoods okay now i am taking the another example in a forest suppose a number of uh, deer okay in it's increased okay stage or deer is increased and uh, uh, means we can say that uh, herbivore number is increased so what will happen that uh, grasses and uh, trees will be uh, diminished very soon and then they will face a problem of scarcity of food then what will happen in this case uh, sometimes government allow to kill them or to hunt them and hunter will go there some some persons who can who are eating them uh, they are allowed to uh, do so because in this situation they are uh, uncontrollable and that's why government is taking the further step so it can be but if their number is not increased and they are in the natural uh, means normal number and uh, uh, a normal balance is going on okay natural balance is going on then government will not allow to hunting them okay or even not allow to interrupt in their areas as well okay so <coughs> uh, we have to decide that at what level the it is unacceptable or at what level it is permissible right okay so in this way things can be distinguished uh, that whether it is uh, unacceptable or whether it is permissible and at what uh, at what uh, level or extent can be permissible okay so these can be decided and it will help us to uh, decide the uh, or make the policies for the better management okay so all these are on the basis of consequences or you can say that overall outcome
we are approaching to that level okay so this is the uh, one important conservation ethics let's move toward the next one and this is an animal rights perspective okay so we are talking about the animals rights okay so uh, animals rights why because it's our moral duty okay to give the right to the animals because they are not able to uh, uh, make a noise for their own right right so that's why the moral rights for the animals uh, always we keep in our mind whenever we talking about the conservation okay and prohibit hunting or killing do not interfere in the wild animals territory okay let the uh, wild animals live their own life freely we should not interfere them okay so these are the basic rights which we should protect or we which we should respect for the animals okay so uh, in this uh, uh, direction we can see that uh, government of india has taken a uh, step in the january 2000 and they have created a uh, animals welfare organization and this is known as the peta peta india its full form is people for ethical treatment of animals so we are giving the ethical treatment for the animals okay or of the animals so uh, it is based in the mumbai and uh, i have took the uh, its uh, website uh, and uh, sorry content from the its own website and you can see so that you can understand the actual uh, reason behind this organization okay so uh, if you see the its logo then uh, this kind of logo is there and uh, the main uh, sentence which is written over there okay or men a punchline is which is written over there this, that is animals are not ours to experiment on eat wear use for the entertainment or abuse in any other way okay so this is the man a line which is useful and on the basis of this beta works so i have took one another para from the about of about the beta uh, on that website okay so you can read this and you can understand that how it is working so let's uh, read beta india focuses primarily on the areas in which the greatest number of animals suffer the most in laboratories in the food industry in the leather trade and in the entertainment businesses so beta india's investigations public education efforts and research animal rescues legislative work special events celebrity involvement and national media coverage have resulted in countless improvements to the quality of life for the animals and have saved countless animals lives lives okay so this is the man actually uh work and outcome of the peta india okay so this is the website of the peta india you can go and check out there check next respect for nature this is another perspective for the conservation ethics so respect for nature is our moral duty why because we always believe in the give and take or pay back to the society or pay back to the mother nature this type of the concept and if you remember then in the previous video or in the previous uh, topic uh, about the values and importance of the wildlife i have uh, discussed about this give and take perspective or pay back to the mother nature perspective so we always believe in that that uh, suppose a tree is giving me the fruit so it's my moral duty to provide water and nutrients to that plant okay or similarly uh, anim an animal is giving me the uh, some resource uh, some food like the in terms of the uh, milk 
okay so it's my duty to give food to uh, that animal as well or to rear that animal as well yeah. so in this perspective we always work okay and it will help uh, our nature by the by an attachment with the, that nature okay however its uh, views can be individual or community based views sometimes uh, you had seen that uh, sacred groves or sacred areas are there okay so community is involved in that uh, particular area okay but sometimes some individual views can be there okay so uh, someone is believing in some kind of the special perspective so they are also uh, all those are also saving the uh, animals and plants and that nature okay so if we will respect for the nature we can save otherwise we can't so uh, let's take an instance i have took one example like the sometimes we also believe on on that that uh, uh, key species should be safeguard or uh, should be saved or conserved because it has ability to control all over the ecosystem of that particular area similarly if we talk about the invasive or invasive type of the species so invasive species all uh, if invasive species are also allowed but generally they harm so we should ensure that uh, they should not harm if they are harming okay so harm causing species are there so we can allow to kill them so in one perspective we are killing uh, an invasive species wherever in the another perspective we are saving or conserving to the key, keystone species okay so here is the keystone species okay so we are uh, in one perspective we are saving our species and in the in case of the another perspective we are killing that species because uh, or we are separating that species not killing actually we are separating okay so both of the kind of the effects can be seen okay <clears throat> but our overall uh, perspective should be like the to respect the nature let's move toward the last one this is the contextual or relational views so if you see this relational view that means uh, our relation how much uh, relation we have uh, with the animals okay let's see emphasis on the importance of the human animal relationship okay uh, supposedly uh, there is an animal which is uh, domestic or pet like the dog okay so this is the pet dog wherever other dog is who is living in the wild and we are not saving that one so why because our perspective is different so we should have the equal perspective for both of them we should respect for both of them and we should give a similar kind of the approaches for conserving both of them okay so if we have similar kind of the relationship or similar kind of the uh, uh, sympathy with both of them then we can approach to the safeguard wild life as well otherwise what will happen uh, we have uh, sympathy with the pet animals but not have sympathy with the wild animals of the similar species okay so this is the different uh, thing so that's why we always say that human animal relationship should be strong but it always should be equal for the both of them however approach can be different like we cannot uh, rear the wild animals and it should not be the uh, compulsory okay but uh, we have to taken care of those wild animals as well protecting from the predators protecting and giving the food if they have scarcity in their own area so these all are our responsibilities 
So we can say that if a hybrid approach is doing, then it will be more better. It means if we are talking about the all of the perspective in a summary manner, like the contract area contract should be there and international uh, uh, organizations should be come on the one stage and uh, take the action uh, for the them utilitarian kind of the perspective likewise whenever should be positive or negative kind of the approaches or values or disvalues we should take care of them animal rights like as peta is working so we should always respect for the animals right as well as our respect for the nature we should always give to give back to the nature likewise if we are increasing the greenhouse gases so we should always uh, take care of uh, reducing them as well okay and next is the relation or contextual kind of the view as well uh, we should have equal uh, kind of the relation or context uh, whenever we're talking about the domestic as well as wild so if we are approaching all of them means a kind of the hybrid approach then we can conserve them in a better so this is the conservation ethics and how we can manage the wild animals now, thank you